I am a mother of three and after having my third child, my life changed dramatically. Um, I had multiple heart attacks, bypass surgery, and now I have heart failure and my independence has just gone. My life has just changed from what it was before. We can't really cure the actual problem, which is the loss of the heart muscle. And this is why this field is very exciting, because it, it, it gives us the option now of coming up with new treatments that can actually uh, solve that problem. It's a really exciting time to be in science, in, in medicine. I'm Sanjay Sinha. I'm a British Heart Foundation Senior Research Fellow. I'm also an honorary consultant in cardiology at Adam Brooks Hospital. The British Heart Foundation funds the majority of cardiovascular research in the UK. It funds five out of the seven people in my lab, including myself, so I'm very grateful to the British Heart Foundation and their ongoing support. It's brilliant to have great, intelligent, motivated, enthusiastic young scientists. Um, and having the British Heart Foundation providing the funding for PhDs means that these enthusiastic, motivated people can actually get in there and do science. That's what they want to do. And it means that hopefully with good training, they'll come out as the cardiovascular researchers of the future who are gonna carry on doing this work and pushing this work ahead. The main focus of our team is on looking at smooth muscle cells. These are the cells that make up the walls of blood vessels. So in, in essence, the first thing we're trying to understand is how do blood vessel walls grow and how do they develop? And by understanding normal development, we can actually understand what goes wrong in disease. The question is, can we use these models to come up with new treatments? And that's what Johannes is using in his project. I'm Johannes Pogier. I'm a PhD student with a medical background and we are a vascular lab here. We are interested in smooth muscle cells. In particular, we are interested in coronary smooth muscle cells because they make up the blood vessels in the heart. So we are currently working on a heart patch that consists of heart muscle cells and blood vessel cells and that is supplied uh, by blood vessels and that is a very important goal to achieve actually. We then want to take this heart patch and transplant it on the hearts with an impaired heart function. I think there has been quite a history in the lab in, in terms of the history with the BHF. It has given us the opportunity to go over to Seattle to Professor Chuck Murray's lab, which is one of the world leading labs in cardiac regeneration, and then taking back this expertise here to Cambridge. And we believe that if we fuse the technology on cardiac regeneration of this lab, and the blood vessel expertise that we have in our lab, that we can make a huge step towards true cardiac regeneration. So this is one of our tissue culture labs. Here is where we grow our stem cells. And we also take these stem cells through different developments to get epicardium, for example, and other tissues of interest. The epicardium is the heart layer in human development that covers the heart. The epicardium is quite a key tissue that we are trying to get to grow the cells that make up the blood vessels. So these actually are some epicardium-derived smooth muscle cells. These are blood vessel cells that we then take 
to put on our bioreactor to engineer a coronary artery. So we are actually very excited to have this piece of equipment in the lab that was made possible through your donations to the British Heart Foundation. This is a bioreactor that allows us to grow life-size blood vessels. We actually grow human coronary arteries in this bioreactor. So our final aim with this really is, is that after transplantation of this heart patch, it will integrate with the heart that it is transplanted on and that it will restore the heart function of the impaired heart. So the key reason really that keeps me going and that keeps me doing my research is by the end of the day the patient. So I am very, very dedicated to do this for the patient and to bring across some, some benefit for um, therapeutics that will emerge in the future and that patients can benefit from. I have a lot of hope in this sort of research. I think that it really can make a difference. I see patients with heart failure every day when I'm on the wards. It's very debilitating. I mean, day-to-day -day things that you or I would take for granted, whether it's getting dressed, having a shower, walking down the road to the shops, you know, it's a challenge if, if your heart isn't working right. I knew that you could have pregnancy problems with your heart, and I knew that obviously after a couple of months they would go away, so I thought it was just something really it's quite simple. I didn't realise the full extent of what was happening. Within 30 seconds, every single doctor that was on the ward was in the room, and that's whenever they told me I was having huge heart attacks. The doctor said, we're going to have to do emergency open heart surgery. He said, you need, if you need to make any phone calls, make your phone calls. So I had to phone my mum, obviously, and it was, it was one of the worst phone calls to ever make, because how do you tell? Sorry, how do you tell your mum that you're going in for emergency surgery? The nurse came in to obviously take me off to um, the to theatre and I just said to Andrew, we need to name this baby. So Andrew went through the names that he wanted, which were names I never liked, and I just thought to myself, hmm, this is my chance to get the name that I want. So I said, I like the name Owen. And that was it, obviously waited off then for surgery. People don't understand heart failure. It's an invisible disability. Um, you know, to look at me, you wouldn't think that I had heart failure. You know, but obviously you don't realise what it takes to get me to look like this. You know, if you saw me first thing in the morning without any makeup on, without my hair done, you know, I look totally, totally different. But I take pride in my appearance and I want to look good because I don't want to walk past the mirror every time to see a sick person because I know them sick because I can feel the exhaustion, but I don't need to see the sick person. And I don't want the boys to grow up with a sick looking mummy. I was always on my feet, always doing stuff. Um, but obviously I can't do that anymore. So I've had to retire at the age of 35. Trish, my carer, is amazing. She's, um, she helps out whenever Andrew works. I see her as the physical me. She enables us to have a better family life. At the minute, there is no cure. You can't fix um, a broken heart, you know, and that's essentially what I have. That muscle has died. It's really, really important to find a cure. The only way that they can find that is to raise money, and it's specifically for men and broken hearts. So the money that's raised goes specifically to find a cure for heart failure, to have hope. Yeah. Although there is more than likely not going to be a cure in my lifetime for, for me. I wouldn't want another person to go through what I have gone through. Jared. Owen's two, will I see him going to school? I was worried I wasn't going to see him walk. We did, that was a big tick in the box, a very, very happy day. Am I going to see the boys go to high school? Am I going to be able to vet their girlfriends? I'm not the mum who I wanted to be, but at the same time, what can I do with my life? What can I do to make a positive out of this? And I might not be the physical mum that I wanted to be, but I know that I am the emotional mum that I wanted to be. It's about appreciating the little things. It's about appreciating life for what it is. You know, I wake up and I'm breathing in the morning. You know, be thankful for it.
very excited by what my team are doing. We're making advances on a whole range of fronts. Uh, people in the scientific field are very excited about this. Uh, the work that's going on, we believe, will lead to major advances in understanding heart disease and also treating it. We need support over the long period. So we really appreciate the support that we get from you. We have the great opportunity to make a big difference, a real difference to uh, heart disease.